Hi everyone, it's Jack back again with another video. So I'm going to be talking about Alibaba. Covered Alibaba a few times in the past. Not much has happened to the price since then, but there's been a lot of news since then. Delisting fears are much less prominent now. Analysts are actually swinging back towards bullish on, on Alibaba. A lot of big investors have been buying, Charlie Munger being one of them. I just want to establish, is it a buy in 2022? So I'm going to look for its debt, its balance sheet, its profitability, its valuation, do some DCFs, and then look at some news around it, its most recent quarter, and then decide whether I think it's a buy, sell, or hold right now. Once I decide if a company is investable and I like its outlook, I have a look at the debt position just because that is a major red flag to me with a lot of companies. As I saw in the last video with Abvi, I thought that was a serious red flag. Fortunately for Alibaba, I don't think this is the case at all. Cash debt ratio of 3.03 .03. this is pretty strong in my opinion very strong for the e-commerce industry it's actually weak versus alibaba's historical comparisons as it continues to deploy cash for growth in areas like cloud computing that we'll get onto in a bit debt to ebitda and debt to equity are also strong positions here at 0 0.4 0 0.16 respectively very strong both versus historical comparisons for alibaba's history I like all these metrics, of course I would like them to be better, but there's definitely reason for optimism here and I see no problems with this, and this is indicated by the given Altman score of 3.45, indicating that the company is not an immediate risk of financial default and is not a company that is in financial distress. The margin picture on the other hand is really strong here. 10.69% operating margin is very strong, and net margin of 15.28 is absolutely excellent. E-commerce and retail in general trends to trade at low margin values, the obvious, the obvious comparison being Amazon and its famously narrow margins. 15.28% net margin is absolutely outstanding. And it's not even that good for Alibaba's history. All these numbers are significantly down versus Alibaba's history as competition heats up. I think it's going to stay this way. They're getting some fierce competition from JD.com and Pinduoduo. So I think it's going to stay this way. But even then, these are really strong margins. And you can see versus the, the wider e-commerce industry, these are absolutely excellent. Return on equity percentages of 134 is good, not bad, not good. It's exactly what I would expect for a company this size. Again, quite strong for e-commerce, but not not that impressive. Return on assets is again right about where it should be at seven point six percent. I would expect between five and ten, maybe fifteen percent for a company of this size and growth. So again, strong for the e-commerce industry, not impressive, not unimpressive, just okay. But it's really the margins that are the most impressive thing about the profitability, here, and that'll give Alibaba a lot of. Margin for error because they'll have such excellent cash flows from this. So aside from the revenue, the great margins and the long-term tailwinds, Alibaba really shines when you look at the valuation metrics. It's undervalued across the board in my opinion. The first metric to look at, of course, is the PE ratio. PE of 17.9 and a forward PE of 13.9. These are both below the S&P average and given the company's consistent growth indicates that the market is not pricing this company correctly based on the fundamentals due to fear around delisting the Chinese government and regulation from the US government. This is, of course, we know this, but to me, this is kind of getting to the point where this risk is now tolerable. Like a 13p is absolutely bargain basement for this company, in my opinion, and some of the cheapest we'll, we've ever seen it, as you can see from the versus history for the PE of, of 18, some of the cheapest we've ever seen it. Price of free cash flow of 11, this is some of the lowest ever recorded for Alibaba. You can see it's just about the best it's ever been in its history. Pretty much all these metrics are just screaming. This is the cheapest Alibaba has ever been since it's been on the public market. Price to earnings growth ratio of 0.81, where one would typically be cheap, indicates again that this company is severely mispriced based on the fundamentals alone and based on its upcoming earnings, future earnings growth. So the next step in my process is, of course, to do a DCF calculation, discounted cash flow, to work out an intrinsic valuation and based on the sum of future cash flows and work out a fair value that I will be willing to pay for this company. So using earnings per share on the left, this is assuming a 10-year growth rate of 15% and an 8% discount rate for the average returns of the stock market. This gave a fair value of $206, significantly higher than the current stock price of $124. 15% earnings per share growth is far below both the 10-year and 5-year averages of 53% and 22.6%. This is, of course, perhaps conservative, but I believe this is a thoroughly achievable growth rate. I think in the longer term, it's going to buy back a significant amount of its own stock. It's got long-term tailwinds in many industries, mainly e-commerce and cloud computing. And I think this is, again, below the five-year rate. I think this is totally achievable. Even at this conservative valuation, there is almost 80% upside here. So that's really absolutely terrific upside based on fair value. From a free cash flow point of view, I believe it is, again, entirely possible for the company to grow at 10 to 15% yearly. In this, in this instance, I've used 10% as a growth rate, again, just to be a bit more conservative. At this growth rate, 10% free cash flow growth, 8% discount for the long-term returns of the stock market, 
This gave a fair valuation of $230, 45.8% margin of safety, and just about just under 100% upside from the current stock price of $124. Clearly, based off both these metrics, this company is trading far below fair value, even with conservative estimations. Got to bear in mind the growing revenue. Over t- the last 10 years, the average rate is 55%, five years, 45%, and in the last year, they grew revenue 48%. So this is a company, if they grew revenue, if they grew earnings, earnings and free cash flow in line with revenue, this would be massively, massively higher. I'm predicting that they're going to grow earnings at a relatively low rate using conservative estimations, and they are trading far below fair value based off these relative to conservative estimations. So you can imagine more bullish estimations that you may do in your own research will result in massive discounts to fair value. So having a look at the most recent quarter, which is the quarter end in September 2021, to get an idea of these claims about how our claims about earnings per share and free cash flow are not completely baseless, these results are really good. Six point, so keep in mind that our Chinese this results are in Chinese yuan, so about six Chinese yuan per per one dollar. So roughly divide these numbers by six. They did 200 billion yuan in sales. So that's for the quarter that is, so that's around $31 billion in sales. Total revenue up 29% year over year, excluding Sun Art. Chinese commerce up 30, 30% year over year, international commerce up 34% year over year, and cloud computing up 33% year over year. That cloud computing segment is still in the low low one or two billions quarterly. This is going to be a tremendous tailwind for the company for the company moving forward. They're still a tremendously profitable at 28 billion in adjusted EBITDA for the quarter. Again, divide that by six. That's what like four billion. This is still an incredibly profitable company. A company that's growing revenue at a tremendous rate, despite there being quite a lot of competition. They have such a dominant position and they're in so many markets that this is an extremely impressive company that I think can continue to grow. Uh, maybe not maybe not 30, 40, 50 percent a year, but I think this will be a strong performer in the, the mid double digits, 10 to 20 to 30 percent every year for the next 10, 15 years, in my opinion, as it carries on its current trajectory. One thing that came out in the news recently that is a bit of a concern is that the Biden administration is reviewing Alibaba's cloud business to determine whether it poses risks to national security of the US. This is basically they want to investigate how Alibaba stores US clients' data, including personal information and intellectual property, and whether the Chinese government could gain access to this, which of course would be a risk to national security and would be a risk to individual users. I don't think this is going to be of any concern. I think in all likelihood, this is going to be water under the bridge in a year's time. It will be quickly forgotten about, and this is not going to affect Alibaba's long-term business at all, in my opinion. I don't. I think this is relatively baseless. We'll find out in the near future. Of course, I could be wrong, but I just can't see this being an effect, having any effect on the Alibaba's business. This is just an article from Seeking Alpha talking about Alibaba and the delistment fears. I don't need to go over the delistment fears. There's tons of videos and there's tons of news around it. It's been well covered and by me in the past. Of course. Delisting is a worry, but as we've just seen with Didi, it relists on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, no problem, and liquidity was restored for investors and they could then sell the shares or buy more shares or whatever you want to do. So the Hong Kong Alibaba already has a Hong Kong listing, so that provides a backup under a worst case scenario. Institutional investors are not particularly worried about this. There's been a lot of institutional investors buying, including Charlie Munger recently. He's been really doubling down on this stock. And as, as you can see from this article, they are also recognising that many of the key valuation metrics are, are especially cheap and there is big downsize protection and big margin safety, in my opinion. So to summarise, I think Alibaba is quite obviously undervalued based on its fundamentals. Even with the conservative approach, there is massive upside from the current stock price. Of course, the reason for this is the fears around government regulation, both Chinese and US, with the investigations around cloud, and of course the delisting fears. Even in the event of a delistment, which I think is unlikely, as is the case with Didi, we have the Hong Kong Stock Exchange to restore some liquidity, and this ultimately will not be that bad of an outcome for investors. It's not a great outcome for investors, but it's one I believe that will be wholly unlikely. Regulations is, of course, a murky area. I believe that the US and Chinese governments will eventually come to an agreement regarding Chinese listed stocks that will favour investors on both sides. Regardless, I believe the opportunity is worth these inherent risks. This is a dominant company with long-term tailwinds and a track record of excellence, trading at 13 times forward earnings and dramatically below fair value. It's an absolute steal, in my opinion, with a significant margin of safety. I think all investments have inherent risk, and I believe this one is tolerable because of the aforementioned, because of its undervaluation and that the margin of safety that comes with that. But of course, you're welcome to form your own opinions and tell me about them in the comments below. You should do your own research, and of course, this isn't financial advice. If you want financial advice, you should go to a registered financial advisor. And with that, I'd like to ask you to subscribe and like the video if you're enjoying the content. See ya.